there were none. Lakes the Frog. Squealer the Pig. Cubby the Bear. Flash the Dolphin. Splash the Whale. Patty the Platypus. Chocolate the Moose. Spot the Dog. Pinchers the Lobster. Join together. They form the beginning of something really big, mysterious, and fun. H. Ty Warner established Ty Incorporated in 1986. A successful global company, they had a beautiful line of stuffed animals, including annual collectible bears. In 1993, Ty Warner came up with an idea to introduce a high-quality but low-priced stuffed animal kids could afford and adults would enjoy helping them to collect. The first nine Beanie Babies were born, designed to be fun, posable characters. Limited availability from the beginning created even a bigger demand. Since Beanie Babies retailed for $4.99 at most stores, by 1995 many people had started to have a good size collection. These collectors spread the word. The fever had begun. Lions form. Beanies were in the news. WBBO Talk Radio, hotter than Cabbage Patch Doll Smurfs, Hula Hoops, and Pet Rocks ever hope to be, Beanie Babies are in the news today. A Hallmark store in Columbus, Ohio, had over 500 people waiting in a line over two blocks long starting this morning at 5 a.m. The store opened at 10, and even though there was a limit of three Beanie Babies per customer, by noon they were sold out. Unfortunately, over 200 people were still in line, and they were upset, but the owner promised more Beanie Babies would be in by next week. I imagine they'll probably start lining up sometime soon. Unbelievable. Ty opened a website. For many people, the hunt to complete and expand their collection became a quest. Lists and hand were the norm. Specific Beanie Babies became standard gifts. Beanie Moms and Dads began searching for working friends and buying multiples for others that couldn't leave work to find Beanies. More people searched the net. Even custom software was invented so people could keep track of their collections. A massive secondary market was created internationally. And with every new retirement of Beanie Babies, values soar. Entrepreneurs came out of the woodwork. Hey, you looking for Garcia? We are! Looking for the weenie? We got it! Looking for the weenie? We got it! 
Looking for the three buddies? We got them! Call the 800 number at the bottom of your screen. We buy, sell, or trade beanies 24 hours a day. That's right, or you can email your request. We got all those hard-to-find beanies you've been looking for. And remember to pick up a mini dome tent at your favorite gift store. The Beanie King makes them and wants you to have one. Beanie Babies, we got them! Visit the Beanie King at the Ohio State Fair. A royal blue peanut purchased for $4.99 in 1993 was now worth over $5,000. In April of 97, McDonald's began a kids' meal campaign with an exclusive line of 10 miniature Beanie Babies made by Ty Incorporated called Teeny Beanie. The popularity of Teeny Beanies was incredible. Beanie Babies were in the news again. WCFT News Time is 2.03. McDonald's better call the Ronald police for today. McDonald's announced they'd have to cut short their kids' meal teeny beanie campaign due to the simple fact that they're out. McDonald's has been overwhelmed by the demand for the miniature beanie babies produced by Ty Incorporated exclusively for McDonald's. The set of 10 beanie babies has been sought after by beanie baby collectors, grandparents, and kids, and people of all ages. People have been said to have been driving from one McDonald's after another in their quest to complete the set of 10. What do you suppose they're doing with all those hamburgers? Everybody loved Teeny Beanies. In just two weeks, a hundred million Teeny Beanies were gone. A set of ten picked up for free is now worth $170. The McDonald's Teeny Beanie campaign made thousands more aware of Beanie Babies and helped catapult Beanie Babies to the status of the world's most desirable and successful collectible in history. Thai Beanie Babies have also become a popular item to use for charity and nonprofit fundraisers. Groups of all sizes have joined with TV and radio stations on their efforts. This morning on KFRD, we're happy to be a part of a great fundraiser for the Old Murphy's Homeless Shelter. If you'd like to have a chance to buy the rare Princess Di Beanie Baby, you can register your silent auction bid by giving a call at 888-623-1000. Once again, that was 888-623-1000. By the way, the last bid we received was for $2,500. Thank you very much. The Princess Diabetes Baby will be sold to the highest bidder this Friday at 8 a.m. So give us a call. Another positive note of this young and exciting history are the hundreds of new businesses created from the popularity of Beanie Babies. Clothes. Furniture, tag protectors, display cases, magazines, and even beanie trees are part of the growing list. From the first nine to the Princess Bear, Aaron, or Britannia, the hunt is on, and collectors from 2 to 82. Kids, grandparents, Young couples. Moms and dads are all being brought together in their search for Beanie Babies. It's a very happy affair. From all of them, we'd like to say, thanks Ty Warner, your success is well deserved. Hi, I'm Steve Canton, producer and host of the Beanie Lover video. I hope you enjoyed the history of Beanie Babies. Now, we're going to take you on an adventure that you've never been on before. We're going to the Beanie Lover convention, to Rosie Wells Midwest Collectors Show. We're going to talk to you about the art of buy, sell, and trade, show you how to spot counterfeits, and take you to a seminar on tag generations. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's start with the art of buy, sell, and trade. Let's talk about the art of buy, sell, and trade. Isn't that something that's very important to every Beanie Baby collector? Sure it is. And what's the best way to go about buy, sell, trade? First of all, check the internet. Learn about Beanie Babies. 
If you don't have a computer, read a book. Buy a video. Hey, there's an idea. You'll learn about beanies in a lot of different ways. You can also learn about beanies by talking to other beanie people, talking to reputable dealers, going to a beanie baby show, and dealing with people that are at the vendor tables. Let's talk about beanie baby shows. Going to a beanie baby show is a lot of fun. But when you get there, one of the things that you definitely shouldn't do is start trading in the middle of the show with other people that came to the show. First of all, this is bad Beanie Baby etiquette. That's right, Beanie Baby etiquette. There is such a thing. Vendors will get very upset. They paid $50 for their table. They paid for advertising. The promoter paid for people to come in to trade with the vendors. If you start trading amongst each other, first of all, you're not trading with someone that you can usually get a phone number from or locate easily. Now let's talk about secondary dealers at stores. When you go to a store, don't park out in front of the store and wait for other people to come up to deal with you. That's just not nice. And let's be nice in this Beanie Baby world that we live in. And you'll get the best deal possible because you'll get a good reputation with the dealers. In the art of buy, sell, and trade, how do you know your righty from your lefty? If you know the prices that are current for the week that you're trading, you're going to be able to sit back and relax. That's right. Just check the Beanie Mom website if you have a computer. The prices are listed every week on what beanies are going for. Or you can subscribe to a weekly or buy a magazine. But stay updated with the prices. You need to know the prices to trade, buy, or sell correctly. Another important factor when you buy, sell, and trade beanies is to be informed. The more names you know and the more you know about beanies, the better off you'll be. Vendors appreciate the fact that you've studied the beanie babies. This is Liberté, not Liberty. This is the Princess Die Bear, of course. When you know the names and you correctly pronounce them, you're going to be treated with royalty. So when I'm trading with a vendor, how do I know what to get for Bucky? Well, what you want to do is know what the retail is and what the vendor is paying. The vendor will usually give you his wholesale price for Bucky against any retail price that he's selling for. This is a fair trade. I know you'll say, well, wait a minute. He's making something on this deal. Right, he is. And he's not going to sell you a beanie without making some profit. But if you've purchased Bucky a long time ago for $5 and you're selling Bucky for $40, do you really care if that vendor sells Bucky for $60? As long as you're getting a credit that makes you a profit and the vendor a profit, you should be happy. Learn to trade win-win and you'll be happy and you'll get the beanies you're looking for. Now we're going someplace where not very many people have been. We were at the Midwest Collectors Show, Rosie Wells Midwest Collectors Show, and we stopped at the hotel the night before and were granted permission to visit the rooms where all the big dealers were trading. You're going to have fun on this journey. Let's go. Here we are at the Clubhouse Inn, right before the Rosie Wells Midwest Collectibles Show, talking with Rick Howe, and uh, we have some very special beanies here that Rick's going to tell us about. Uh, Rick, uh, what makes these beanies uh, different from other beanies, and tell us about the value. Okay, what these are is they're uh, out of Broadway shows. Yeah, really this is the Ragtime Curlies, and it'll have a special ribbon on it that says Ragtime on it for the musical that was called Ragtime. Over here you got Phantom of the Opera which has bongo, maples, velvet, and peanut, and on the tag it says the Phantom of the Opera. Uh, in the middle there you got Candidates, same with the ribbons, I'll say Candidates on them. The Joseph, uh, four set of Garcia, Peace, Inch, and Fleece, and then you got Showboat 
on the end there and they have also showboat written on the tag with Goldie Scoops and Peace. Now do you uh, sell the program with the set? Yes, we sell it all as a set. Okay. If the set's not complete it's not worth as much so you got to make sure to have the whole set with the program. So the, um, the cub, uh, cubby beanie that was sold mm -hmm. at the Chicago games, uh, what's, what's different about these? Well, these are all brought out from shows, and the shows themselves sponsor it. It has no ties with tie themselves. The, the shows put it on themselves. Oh, I see. So they go out and they buy them from the secondary right. market. Right. And, and uh, make up the ribbons and yes. uh, put this whole promotion together to help ticket sales? Yeah. Well, help probably. ticket sales and everything. And if you notice, on all the Twish tags, they're all Canadian uh, Twish tags on them. So yeah. what, do you, what do you think causes that to happen? Well, I think they buy them on the secondary market of Canada or whatever and then put them together for the shows. I see. Was it pretty successful for them? Yes, it, it brings in a lot more uh, money for the, for the shows. Are they able to it raise draws. the price of the ticket? I think so. <laughs> what, give me an example. Of what does the Phantom of the Opera set sell for right now? Uh, Phantom of the Opera, the four-piece set with the book, is going for $1,200. $1,200. Well, and uh, what did they pay for it when they bought a ticket? Uh, my dad and stepmom paid for it, and my wife bought it through them, so I think they might have. I have no idea what they paid for what it. What do you think the original? Can you give us an idea uh, what the original ticket was? The original ticket, I think, for the Phantom of the Opera, they paid $85 for the ticket. Uh, that came with the beanies? And, no, and that the wouldn't have came with the beanies, because you couldn't get a maple for, for $85 this day. Uh, I'd say for the whole set, they might have paid four, around 400 for the 400 I right. see. What about the ragtime musical here? Uh, this ragtime set goes for around $1,000 right now. Originally, I think we paid almost 650 for them. Okay, and what about uh, at, the, uh, at the event itself? At the show, I think they were going for, I think, around 350 three and a quarter, 350 For the ticket and the beanies. Ticket and the and, beanies. And includes the, the program. Right. I see. Well, that's... Uh, Certainly an interesting aspect of the uh, beanie world that we live in here. Yes, it is. <laughs> Great. Well, we wish you a lot of luck. Okay. Thank you. Basically, what would you take on this one of each? The well, total price for all of them, what I got them marked is 44. I'll go 4,200 on the whole set. So 200 off. That's what programs everything. Hmm. Okay, I'll, I'm going to consider it. I'm not going to commit right now, but I mean, it seems $200 off. For me, it's kind of not a lot of room for me to resell it. Elaine, I see that the, you have a lot of tag savers here. Do you do big business in tag savers? Well, this is the difference whether you have a tag saver on it or not. If you have your tag right here and you don't put a tag protector on, like this little guy, the end of it's uh -huh. nicked up. He would be about 2200 Since this is nicked up, we're probably going to have to go 18 on it. So you lost $400 for not having yeah, a 10 cent tag. Right. And if it were creased even Thank worse, a very creased tag takes half the value away from your beanie. So, you know, to spend a thirteen ninety nine and get a hundred of them, it's a good investment. <laughs> That's why the the rare beanies over here in these cases, and you sell a lot of these cases too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, 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 the wall of cases here. The wall of cases. About 10000 a month they go through. That's fantastic. Yeah. How many of these uh, tag protectors do you go through? Like, he would know more on the count, but we go through cases. Cases. <laughs> Tag protectors or the case? There's a tag protector. I got tag protectors. Uh, uh, shoot. I want to go through probably about. Um, yeah, because it's 50 bags. You know, it's not perfect. 50 bags a day and 100 in a bag. Five thousand. There's, there's 100 here, so it's 5,000 a day. Um, 5,000 a day. Okay, that's, that's. I'll give you 19 for this. 150,000 a month. One of these in there. I can't that's a lot that. of tag protectors. 18. Let's see, we said 18 on this. 19, 20. Well, can you give me on this then? I've got to go with the two, and I'm out of here. Okay. 2,000 altogether. And that's good. This little guy is going to appreciate very well for you. I am. 18 and 2. What do you think you're going to get on that? Yeah, it's not doing me anything. How about 1950? 
We'll go 1975. And that's the deal. This is a 1975. nice. 1975. You know what? Yeah. We got people calling. So and this, this is a very nice tag. I mean, it's got a little nick on there. And, that's mm -hmm. it. and then I got to get some of these. Okay. So you want to throw these in? No, two. I can't throw them in. Okay, well, let's charge them too. Give me that, that, that. One second. Thank you. What's he filming for? We, uh, <laughs> what's he filming for? Huh? We're going to be in a Beanie Baby Beanie, uh, this video. <laughs> Checking it out. <laughs> so you're checking his eyes. No one ever smoke. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So got to check him for that Some smoke. people like, I mean, if they, they smell like smoke, they'll return them to us. Right. I mean, this is how I break it down. I mean, this piece alone, we sell with, if it had a mint tag, I mean, I've, I sell, I've sold these as high as 3500 for this one here without a tag. I mean, with a tag. Without a tag, I usually do half off. They're charging 1100 for it. I mean, there's $500 for me in, in this piece right now without a tag. So this is the problem. This one here, I see less of these than these here. I mean, this right. one here is That's like true. extremely That's rare. True. This is almost as rare as a brown old face. Not as rare, but it's it's almost as rare. And I mean, I sold a brown, a brown old face Teddy with no tag for two grand last week. A brown no tag. So I'm gonna buy this one. This is the one I'll buy for 1100 because I know there's for me as a reseller, I've got room in this one to make you know three, four, five hundred dollars. So this is the one, I mean, this is the one I'll right. take right here. So one down and 50 to go. <laughs> <laughs> what was the offer? I offered like four, four grand for them. I don't know. I was over 41. 41. 4100 for all the right <laughs> No, for the whole complete set of everything. The whole complete set. Would you take 5,000 for all those and this? Take that. No. No. All right. I'll I'll take I'll take the sets of that. We'll go with that then. Okay. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ten, There's five. You want to count that? Huh? You got five there? And what was it? Fifty? Fifty-two. One, two. Okay. There you go. Not good. All right. Thanks. All right. <laughs> what beanie do we have there? What is that? Tell him what that is. This one's the new face Violet Teddy and second generation hang tag. It's a real pretty piece. And what uh, are we trying to get for that? Uh, this one's twenty two hundred. Twenty two hundred for Don because he has to make because he's got to make more money. I thought it was right. ten thousand. Now how much is this one? That one is oh, for you four. 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 Tank is rough one. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, and how much you asking for this? Four. Four thousand for this. Mm -hmm. So you need mom just changed. Um, they went four to forty eight on. Derby and four to forty-seven on Brownie, or vice versa, one or the other. I can't remember. Because I was flying out at seven o'clock this morning. I stayed at Beanie Mom till two o'clock last night. Five thirty this morning, still hadn't changed it, so they must not right, have done it. Because I like, printed this last night about midnight. Yeah. So, so like, how often? How often do the prices change? I mean, like, are we talking every hour here? No, Is but there a ticker tape going somewhere. <laughs> they were doing them after the shows on weekends, but for collectors and dealers, it was more helpful. Now they're changing the prices on Thursday nights if there's been any change in the market. What's the worst purchase you ever made on a beanie? I don't think I've ever made a bad the 10, purchase. You just... you don't think... The prices have raised so drastically that we've always been able to get out of them, even though the many bad buys that I did buy. Okay. So the market is really, really strong. So great. Who, who do you find as your uh, your uh, regular buyer? How do you? Who, who would that be? Is it everybody or everybody anybody? Everybody from doctors, lawyers, uh, uh, just a regular white collar, blue collar workers, and they all 
one Beanie Babies. So it's uh, any age other, group. Yeah, a, a lot of uh, the older adults. I'm, I'm you know, middle age. Garcia the bear, the beanies used to follow him around because Garcia traveled from town to town. He's pretty popular as you can see, some even say he's legendary. for all to see. Hope and freedom is my way. That's where I wear Flag USA. Here we are at Rosie Wells Midwest Collectors Show, and I'm happy to say I'm here with Peggy Gallagher from Burridge, Illinois. I have to, there's so much about this lady that I have to put it on this big sheet here. You know, you've been on the Today Show on NBC. You've been featured in Beanie World Magazine, the Stephen John Show on WGN, uh, you were telling me it gets to get the highest ratings in town? Yes, when, when it's a beanie show. When it's a beanie show, well, why not? <laughs> you wrote the first Beanie Baby book ever published, The Beanie Baby Phenomena, and I, I want to get an autograph. I want to get an autograph after this is over here. Published two price lists. We have them right here. One for winter, 97, 98, and one for spring, 98, right there. Uh, you wrote for Rosie Wells Collector Bulletin. You have articles on the Beanie Mom website, guest speaker for the Minnesota Zoo, uh, your website, www.beaniephenomena, that's a hard one to spell, you know, <laughs> dot com, uh, 86 pages, 50,000 hits since November of 97, presently working on volume two of the Beanie Baby Phenomena. When do you sleep? That's I don't. I, I, I don't I sleep. I just don't sleep. <laughs> I and, don't have time to. And what do people call you for, Peggy? I mean, you know, I know that uh, you're renowned worldwide for your... Uh, your expertise on uh, on beanies and uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what people do when they call Peggy Gallagher okay um, one of the greatest things uh, I began an authenticating business for people because uh, there are some copies and counterfeits so I started this new venture and it's on the website and people fill out an authenticity form is, it, Mail is this one of them right here that's it well, here's the here's the certificate of authenticity right here right correct and uh, this is what people need nowadays isn't it well it's a good idea if they're buying an expensive beanie because some of these are very rare and uh, there are so many counterfeits out there it just is a very secure way to especially uh, buying or selling on the internet itself and what do we have here okay that is the cranberry old face bear with the second generation tag yes and he is authentic Thank you. And okay, Peggy, why don't you tell me a little bit about your special case here that you put the beanies in? Okay, when they when they send me the authenticity form with their beanie filled out, I examine the beanie baby to make sure that it is an authentic beanie baby and an authentic tie tag. Then I put him in this enclosed container with this tape on here, 
and the Beanie Baby is numbered, and I keep records of who buys it and, you know, when they bought it. And then I put this evident tape on there so that if they're trying to sell it, they know that this case has not been tampered with and the original beanie was put in there. And this is a little bit better than a medicine bottle because if you see over here, you see right there, it says Peggy Gallagher, and then you look over here and we'll pull this off. And this is what happens. Boy, right there. Isn't that great? Tell you what, I feel like we should have an audience here applauding. <laughs> Don't you? Wow! <laughs> it really is great. But that makes, that, that makes sure that people know that they have an authentic beanie. I'm not going to let you get away just yet here, you know. Uh, we have some information that I think they need out there in video land about tags. Tag, tag generations. Tag generations. Tag so. generations are very important. And magically, these beanies have appeared. <laughs> so That's what happens in video land. So I'm going to let you take over from there. It would be a pleasure, sir. Go at it. So the importance of tag generations is collectability. For instance, uh, a fourth generation Bessie today, retired Bessie, is worth about $60. If you go out in the room, you'll find it from $50 to $75. Same Beanie Baby, third generation tag, $200. Find some of those mispriced out there. So know, know your tag generations. You do the talking here, These okay? These are nice placards, by the way. Well, thank you. All right, what you see here is the first generation tie tag. This is the first tag that the Beanie Babies were distributed with. This is a single tag. Uh, it does not open like a book. On the back is the printing. Um, this is Puncher's, the very rare pinch, uh, well, he's Pinchers too, but this was one of the first nine Beanie Babies that came out. It's in kind of a bad condition, but this is very, very rare. Instead of Pinchers, it says Punchers. And then they also talk about the Twish tag, which is a white tag with black ink. This was the first Twish tag, and it shows the years, 93, 94, and 95. Um, then we'll go to the second. So, Peggy, uh, hold on a second. When you said single tag, you mean as opposed to a book tag like that? As opposed up. to so a book so type of tag. So it's it's not folded It's over. a single tag, correct. And that was only for the first generation, First right? generation. And those tags are very, very valuable. Paul is getting the second generation tag. All right, this has the same font as the first generation that we saw on punchers. Except this is the open book type of a tag. Um, this is a German tag, so the writing on the inside is not the same as this to from, um, which this is a variation in tags. This is a different type of tag, but it's also a correct tag. This side over here says Tide Deutschland, whereas most of the Beanie Babies that, you would have, that were distributed from this country, they look like this. The Beanie Baby collection, it tells you about how they were handmade. And then the twist tag on this will also be this... Um, black and white ink, and there are also some with the red twitch tag, but they don't have the name on them. Uh, Peanut the Elephant came that way, the dark blue. So this tag now is being retired, but they still did come out with this tag, and then they came out with this red tag. There was some talk a while ago about anything with a clear uh, oh, they come attachment. In, they come in both clear and the red. So just, just because it's a clear right. attachment, doesn't mean that it's counterfeit. Correct. Thanks. That was a good point to point out. Because some people do get that confused and they think that if theirs isn't red or if it's the clear plastic, it's different. All right, now we're moving into the third generation, which is very, very different from the first or the second, because here is the difference in the font, the Thai font. This one also comes in the booklet. And when you open it up, it has two from spooky, um, this is a spook, and some of the spook and spooky say designed by Jenna Boldebuck, which is kind of unusual to have that on the, this tag. So this will probably be more valuable because a lot of the spooks and spookies don't even have that on there. And then the tush tag, these also, the, even though this is a third generation tie tag, they also have the beanies with this first generation tush tag. But now also they come with a third generation twist tag, which is in red with the beanie's name on it, with the heart. So 
Third generation is bubble letter. It's a bubble letter opposed to this smaller font that the first and second had. Now Ty got very creative here. This is when he came out with his original Beanie Baby, Ty Tag. It also has the, the larger font opposed to the real tiny. And then if you open it up, it has the birth date, the style number. This is when they came out with the poem. These came out in mid-1996, and Liberty was the first Beanie Baby that came out with this poem tag. And then you look at the Twish tag, it also has the red, but now they've added this little star. And this would be the uh, fourth generation Twish tag. The heart with the name and the star. And a couple things to note here about fourth generation, because the new tag, fifth generation. Fourth generation has an I that's a one line I. It's not a, like a capital I with, with uh, a top and a bottom to it, which I'll show you when you get to fifth. And fourth generation also had the birth date Numbers. numbers instead uh, of written out the yeah. month so fourth generation bubble letters there's no longer any gold around it like the third generation like uh, like spook has gold around the ty here is the brand new fifth generation all right this one is basically the same as the fourth on the exterior but it still has a little bit fancier font to it and then when you open it up you can see, that, like he said, the date of the birth has October written out instead of having the numeral 10. And the font is totally different. It looks kind of cute compared to the old-fashioned way. And another thing, they've changed the address of their Thai Europe distributor in, Can uh, in uh, England. So the date's going to be different, so don't get upset about that. And the style number on this tag is now in the barcode, so it would be the last four digits. The other tags, the style number, is written right in there, style number 4090, whereas now Ty doesn't have that style number in there. It just has his little name, and then on the back, in the barcode, it has his style number. A couple other things that happened between fourth and fifth. We put them here beside each other. It uh, might be easier to see. So the I in original Beanie Baby is different. Fifth generation, it's got those horizontal lines top and bottom uh, and uh, the date of birth on the inside. Oh, one more thing about the new tags on a couple of the rabbits, they have a misspelling with original and the collectors are going absolutely cra double crazy I, over that. Right? It's a yeah. double I. Yeah. So depending on how long it takes for Ty to correct the error, that is going to be a hot tag. So that was, uh, that's not a counterfeit. No, that is that's not a, a counterfeit. That's a mistake that happened got out into the marketplace and it's now a, a valued collectible. Correct. Flash the dolphin. You know that dolphins are the smartest breed. Well, Flash the dolphin knows how to read. She's teaching her friends Flash to read too. So maybe one day they could both read to you. Because she sprained a limb, but Splash never learned how to swim. I'm sure Splash is happy that you caught her. Just be careful not to leave her underwater. Raider of the 
back. Radar at the back flies late at night. He can soar to amazing height. If you see something as high as a star, take a good look. It might be radar. Seymour the seal. Seymour is the little white seal. Fish and clams are her favorite meal. Playing and laughing in the sand, she's the happiest seal in the land. Well, now I'm, I'm lucky to be here with Rosie Wells. Rosie Wells is the person in charge, the in innovator, the inventor of the Rosie Wells Midwest Collectors Club. Uh, this is the, your show. Uh, how do you get to be Rosie Wells? How do you get to be the author of all of these fabulous books? A person uh, that's uh, renowned in the uh, collector's industry. Well, uh, yes, I know what you mean. Well, first how, how of all, you Wells? had better be a collector. 16 years ago, I started a little newsletter for our Precious Moment collectors. And my husband and I uh, got started uh, with cattle, first of all. And so we did a cattle magazine. Well, we knew how to do a little newspaper. So we got into Precious Moments, and I said, I, I, uh, Dave noticed the checkbook kept going, doo -doo -doo, and he said, you got to get a job, got to get another job. So that's how it all started. I said, well, I'll write a little newsletter on this. You know, maybe I can get 20 or 30 people, and then that money will help pay for all these hundreds of figurines that I'm buying. And that led to? That led to the Precious Collectibles magazine. Back in February of 83, it was eight pages. That's all I knew. Eight pages, and what is it now? Well, well, we've got 140-some pages. 140-some right? pages. Right. It's just a little increase there. Me sitting at the kitchen table, and uh, David telling me I had to get a computer, which scared me to death. Today, we have 55 employees. And, of course, what's, oh, biggest, what's biggest today? It's Beanie Babies. It's Beanie Babies. Oh, it's something else. It's a couple a years ago, in our area, southern Illinois, uh, no one knew what Beanie Babies were. And now they do because of your books. Had a big help, I think. <laughs> I would advertise everywhere. Beanie Babies, come into our store. People would come into our store and say, I come in to see what Beanie Babies were. Had no idea. Two years ago, that was in 1996. Well, today, you don't have to advertise what Beanie Babies are because everybody collects Beanie Babies. Every age, everybody's collecting Beanie How Babies. How many vendors here at your, uh, your Midwest Collector Show are selling Beanie Babies? Aren't they all? <laughs> <laughs> what happened uh, today and, and with all the other collectibles, even though people are still collecting the figurines and the ornaments, there is that craze for the Beanie Babies and probably on everybody's table, almost everybody, there's Beanie Babies, they're selling Beanie Babies as well as their Precious Moments or their Hallmark. Now what's happened here is some collectibles uh, have, well some of them are like 10, 15 years old. Mm -hmm. The hype is gone because the scarcity is not out there. Everywhere you can find what they're collecting. They're also a little high in price on some things. Mm -hmm. you know. And baby babies came on the scene. They were affordable, they had quality, and everybody was wanting baby babies. And because it's affordable, it makes it so right. it's, it uh, ranges from two to 82. So, so, Rosie, let's talk about uh, Beanie Babies and how they got involved in your publication. We were the first to publish Beanie Babies on the cover of a national magazine. And today that magazine is between $25 and $30. And that was about, um, oh, so about almost a year So the collector's magazine ago. is a collector item itself. Yes, sir. And you'll find that a uh, lot of publications and anything that's got beanies with them, articles in your newspapers, they're collectible. So we're real proud to be the first to put it on, and when it went to the Thai company, I think they were really excited to see their Beanie Babies on a national cover. And of course, this is our second Beanie Price Guide that we've done. Last year we did our first uh, Price Guide for Beanie Babies. I'm going to be the I'm going to be your little Vanna. All righty. Hold it up. And we do okay. um, uh, all over the United States. We gather prices of what things are selling for. We average prices, and we also uh, project for a few. Uh, months in our guides what these are going to be doing on secondary market. Mm -hmm. Now this is great to insure your pieces. You want to insure your collection of beanies because there's sometimes you have fire and never insure your beanies for what you paid for them. I'm going to ask you a question here. This is the this is the tie tag. How'd you do it? Right. Well let's just say it's been approved 
that's fine. We got an okay to go ahead and do that. And um, a lot of people are buying the guide just to set this in their collection. That red heart tag does it all. It sure is gorgeous. Right. And uh, inside the book is just as gorgeous. You have some uh, computer animation here along with like in, with all the different uh, Beanie Babies. Like here's Allie and he's, uh, he's actually out there in the swamp. Oh yeah, we, we've got them all in their own little habitat. Yeah, that's pretty uh -huh. neat. And, uh, we even got Wiener on a hot dog bun. You, no, Weenie, come on. Weenie, uh, you don't. Wiener's on a hot dog bun. Now, let me right see there here. he is. No, you gotta, it's all you, done you, alphabetically you here. you got to be now. kidding me, Rosie. You didn't yeah. really do oh, that, Oh, did yeah, I did. Yep, yeah. there he is. There you go, folks. <laughs> Weenie is on a hot, hot dog, dog bun. bun. <laughs> What plain, no mustard ketchup. <laughs> you wouldn't want to do that to your bean. No, no. But we have discussed the um, different tags, the, the um, generation tags, Every and we've given each generation tag um, a secondary market value that yeah. uh, easier to ensure. People like to keep track of well, what they're doing and what they have. <laughs> I really feel the Thai company has it, um, a a hold, a touch, what a lot of companies don't, on how to treat a collectible collectible. They just know how to produce the right thing at the right time or withhold something at the right time. When they're starting to be in abundance, then they slow up, don't do the production, you know. That, that's great. And it keeps the collectible alive. It you don't have it, a saturation. It keeps the secondary market right. healthy. There has to be a secondary market to have a collectible. Yes, that's, uh, I would say that uh, right. that's a statement that goes without question. Sometimes they'll say, oh, isn't it a shame? Look how high those are. You know, uh, uh, I'll never be able to get one. Well, yes, eventually you'll be able to get one, but you're going to be able to have Beanie Babies for a long time because all the people that are excited. I've never seen anything like this in my life in collectibles in the past 16 years. Even back when I collected bubblegum, they didn't do this. Rosie okay. Rain. <laughs> Right here is also something else, a weekly. Who would be so crazy to do a weekly? Well, well, I think I'm yeah, sitting next to somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do a weekly, and right here on the front page is all about Beanie Babies. Did you know that Ty's going to be reporting, promoting Major League Baseball games with spatial different beanies on different what days? Is, what, Look let, at let's here. read a little bit about Well, Chicago about Cubs it. on May 3rd, Daisy the Cow is going to be there. And for the 10,000 kids. New hmm. York Yankees, May 7th, is going to have Valentino the Bear. Valentino the Bear. Right. St. Louis Cardinals will be on May 22nd. Stretch the ostrich. Yep. Kansas City Royals. See, uh, uh, that's, this you might not ever know that if you didn't get this weekly. Oh, well, I tell you Everything. What, I think yeah. any beanie yeah. person needs this weekly. Uh, you know, it was interesting to me, Rosie, that you said that you started with bubble gum. Started with collecting bubble gum and you get the wrappers and everything like that. And it kind of made me reflect on, on this beanie thing. You know, I mean, I see, I see kids at these swap meets and they're running the tables. Yes, they're, I know. They're, they're bi little business people. Trying to wheel and deal with them. But the great thing about this is that these kids are collecting beanie babies now. They may be collecting beanie babies in 50 years from now too. But they're the collectors of tomorrow. They're going to be our leaders in collecting the different collectibles. They're going to know what to look for, how to look for it. But it's just a new entrepreneurism for kids. 14, 15 years, it's nothing for them to have big businesses on the Internet. Yeah, you know? And it's and so neat. They get to use the computer. Oh, you know? yes. Uh, there's, there's no stopping as to who collects mini babies. Baseball players, doctors, lawyers, nurses, housewives, grandmas, grandpas. Yeah, My I, mom's 86, and she's got her collection. She's got her collection? All right. I was, at a, I was at a charity auction the other day, which is another good thing I want to say about beanies. I think more money has been raised for charities in the last few years with Princess Die auctions, with different charity auctions. I know that a lot of Hallmark dealers who have never been involved with raising money for charities have taken this opportunity to raise money for charities. Right. And charities have been able to get people really excited. How many times can you auction off that TV? You know, how many times can you get people excited about a TV? But you can get people excited about a Beanie Baby because everybody wants the collectible. And I was working at a charity auction, and I, and I, and I do that, you know, let me see here, let me see, let me see this watch here. I only get a one, only one, two, one, two, one, three, nine, hey, four, eight, 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 and what happened was this 12-year-old girl was handing me the beanies. 
and she had been trading on the internet and she was making a thousand dollars a week on the internet and her mother her mother was taking that money and putting it into her college fund this girl is going to send herself through college with beanie babies right so it's just a fabulous it's thing in a capitalistic society to train kids when they're young well so many people have come up with products you know the hang tags for mm -hmm. the protectors different display cases Oh, yeah, uh, see all sorts of little barns, little houses, you name it, clothes, everything for Beanie Babies. Books. Oh, oh yeah, a you lot gotta of have people books. Have, have done yeah. books. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta get those books, and I think yeah. I tell you, your books are wonderful. Your uh, weekly collectors gazette. It looks like a, it looks like a winner. You know, uh, oh. it looks like uh, it looks like you keep hitting home runs. Yep. Remember you know? our website, www.rosiewells.com. Okay. Remember. <laughs> Thank you, Rosie. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you very you. much. It's been a pleasure. Uh, same here. Doodle the Rooster. Listen closely to Cockadoodle Doo. What the rooster's saying to you? Hurry, wake up, sleepyhead. We have lots to do. Get out of bed. Bessie. Bessie the cow likes to dance and sing because music is her favorite thing. Every night when you are counting sheep, so sing a song to help you sleep. Tabasco the Bull. Although Tabasco is not so tall, he loves to play basketball. He is a star player in his dream. Can you guess his favorite team? Late to bed, late to rise, nevertheless, who's quite wise? Studies by candlelight, nothing new. Like a president, do you know who? Sparky the Dummy. Sparky rides proud on the fire truck ringing the bell and pushing his luck. He gets underfoot and when trying to help, he often gets stepped on and lets out a yelp. Spot. See Spot sprint, see Spot run. You and Spot will have lots of fun. Watch out now because he's not slow, just Stand back and watch him go. Boy, I feel, I feel lucky today. I feel lucky. I'm here with Sarah Nelson, the Beanie Mom. You know, no one knows who the Beanie Mom is, and I get to sit here with you and talk to you about that big website, that, that big website in the sky. All those, how many hits do you get? Um, quite a few, about 350,000 a day. 350,000 a day. Do you answer them all personally? I try to. I try to answer all the emails. I do get a lot. And so how many people do you have involved with your site? I have, uh, I do, I publish the website all by myself. I have a number of people that work with me though. Okay. I have the Beckys who do the price guide and a lot of the information. I have Vicki who does the oddities and the net news. Peggy writes articles for me. It's a lot of fun. The most popular sections are the price guide, people go by that for the retired <laughs> prices, the um, collector's corner, which is buying, selling, trading, which is also very big on the internet, a lot, of, a lot of activity in that section. Another section that's growing quite a bit is the swap meets. As you can see, beanie shows are very big, and they're going up all over the country, so I post uh, swaps in all the different countries. How many beanie swap meets are happening on a weekly basis that are posted on your site? On Thursday, I posted a hundred swaps and on Friday I posted a hundred swaps before I left so that, that's it's just a dish for the week? No, that's that's for all the ones I had for March and April. That shows you how many shows there are going all over the country. And those are just the ones that are smart enough that to know that they can advertise on, on the, the internet. Right. Site. right. Right. Right? That's right. When I walk through the show, right. uh, everyone talks about the Beanie Moms 
price guide. Right. Well, that's put together by the Beckys, Becky Phillips and Becky Escansoro, who are dealers, and they also they call all over the country and have people call them and tell them what uh, the beanies are moving for. So they track that. They also track the auctions. Mm -hmm. So they keep their fingers on the pulse of the market fairly well and, and come composite with that during the week and come up with prices. Okay, is it like updated like weekly? I do the price guide every week. Not every piece changes every week, but okay. I, the price guide is published every week. All we do on my page is the retired. They do some manufacturing oddities, and we're also tracking the teeny beanies. So it's five pages now. I'm, I'm curious, what are the teeny beanies up to now? This the set of teeny beanies, I believe, is 175 to 200. That's the range. Any forecast on the new ones that are coming out? No, but I can see that because the new ones are coming out, the old ones are starting to skyrocket. The prices are going up. So, do people pay to be on the site? No, it's a free site. It's a free site. Right. I, the thing I do charge for is selling ads, but the site right. itself, all the information's free. But selling all ads. All the history. Selling, because I'm just wondering, I mean, that's so much work. Yes, it is and a lot of work. Definitely, I know you probably a lot of it is a, started out as a labor of love. It was. It was a hobby. But I, you still love the labor. Yeah, I do. I do, because I like to keep connected. My, my joy of collecting started when I received three beanies as a gift for my children. And my kids liked them, and I loved them, and that was it. I was hooked. So I started looking. I live in Virginia and started looking around, and I couldn't find any. And my husband works for an Internet service provider, so I was instantly into the net, and I knew about it. So I would search online for beanies, and that's how I, excuse me, that's how I built up a lot of my collection in the beginning was through the net. And at that point, believe it or not, there's probably only five, ten beanie sites out there. There really wasn't very much. And so I thought, well, I'd like to start a fun place where people can swap stories. I like pictures of all the old things mm -hmm. uh, that the old time collectors had just to share with everybody. So that's why I started Beanie Mom. And how many sites are out there now? Oh, how I'd many? say there's hundreds, even thousands dedicated to beanies right now. So if somebody punches in... Retailers have their own beanie. sites. Ooh. Yes. They get, they get hundreds and hundreds yes. of sites come up. If you go into a search engine, you wouldn't believe all the hits you could possibly get. And even after all those sites have been invented, you're still getting 350,000 hits a day? Right. Well, I'd say that that's a pretty popular site. Well, we, we, try, to, we try to keep a good site. We're proud of our site and we enjoy doing it. Well, so how much uh, computer um, equipment do you have to keep this all going? I run, Beanie Mom runs off of six computers. Six computers. Right. I have three laptops. <laughs> It, uh, we have a server in our Did basement. You, your husband, like, you know, is he, is he down there working on all the well, equipment and everything? No, all the time? It, it's not like that. He put a LAN in our house, and we have 17 computers in our house, Seven. and six of them run off of Beanie Mom. Where do you have all these computers? I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> is this, I'm just trying to imagine your basement. Well, yeah, we have a full rack in our basement with the servers and all the equipment we need to run it. When you answer the email, I'm curious, um, that just seems like so much labor. It is. It takes a lot of time because, you know, people, people have a lot of questions. There's a lot of new collectors. I've learned that many new collectors started after the teeny beanies, mm -hmm. and I'm expecting even a, an additional wave after the next set of teenies come out. People found them at McDonald's, and they found the little ones, and then they wanted the big ones to go with it. So mm -hmm. they found those, and then they wanted the rest of the collection, and that's just taken off. What's the most common question you get asked? People want to know if they're, they find a beanie oddity, mistag, and they want to know if it has any extra value. What's the question that drives you crazy? That one. <laughs> <laughs> that one. <laughs> People, they hear about rumors from other sites, and they right. want to, they want a, some kind of confirmation. That's another one. Like the, let's say, uh, the blizzard. Right, the blizzard the rumor blizzard was a big one. Out and, for a long time. Yes. And, uh, and now, yeah, yeah, the blizzard and Dairy Queen issue. And, uh, and what, was the, what was the deal with that? Rumored new bears. That's, uh, they think there's going to be a peach bear coming out, so that's also another popular hot mm -hmm. rumor. Where did those rumors start? I don't know. <laughs> People just, you know, want to have fun, so they just put something out there. Mm -hmm and I, see how far it goes. I think people are having fun. Yes, they are. And it sounds like you're having fun. I'm having a great time. Okay. Well, listen, I really appreciate you coming here today. No, thank and talking you. talking about the Beanie Mom site. Thank it's you been a pleasure. Thank, thank you, you very much. Tank. This armadillo lives in the south. 
shoving Tex-Mex in his mouth. He sure loves it south of the border, keeping his friends in good order. Bee is my favorite bee baby. Grunt the Razorback. Some beanies think that Grunt is tough. No surprise, he's scary enough. But if you take him home, you'll see. Grunt is the sweetest beanie baby. Let's start with chops. So when you're looking at the beanies, as you can see, they look the same. But now let's examine the differences. The important thing to remember is if you don't have a real chops to compare, you must know the differences. First of all, the fake chops has a very firm head with a stuffing that is totally different from a real Beanie Baby, which is nice and cushy. Second, the eyes are much wider on the fake Beanie than on the real Beanie Baby. Now the true way to tell, and usually always the way that you can tell the quickest, is the tag. The tag on the fake chops has a wide rim, and on some of the gold you can actually even see some of the red coming through. Also notice when we compare the two. Over here on the real Beanie Baby, you have the uniform gold stripe around the heart and the star, the points on the star. Now notice the points on the star on the fake Beanie Baby, a little more rounded. The tush tag on most counterfeits are wider. See right here? The ears on the real Beanie Baby come around to the bottom with the black. On the fake, as you can see, it comes around outside the edge. If you remember those differences, you'll be able to spot a fake chops in a minute. Peking, the panda, has a tag that you've probably read about. The counterfeit doesn't have the umlaut over Nuremberg uh, and doesn't have a, uh, a comma after Waterville, has a period after Waterville. And the big giveaway, the black under the eye is shaped a little different than the uh, authentic Peking. The big giveaway is the depth of the eye. If you feel the back of the eye, the counterfeit Peking has a long stem, about a quarter of an inch long, out the back of the eye. And the real Peking does not, it's a rounded back. Watch out for Peking. Tags are good, except for the mistakes on the inside. Counterfeit, real. The inside of the tag reads that this is, in fact, a peanut, but the poem, if you read it, says, Waddle the penguin has to dress up. So the poem is from Waddle, the tag is from peanut. You can tell the difference in the face, but if you check the tag, for sure you'll recognize that this is counterfeit, this is genuine. Here's a duck in a good mood. This is a duck having a bad day. It's almost got a corduroy type fabric here. See the difference there? You can spot that right away. This right here is true quality underneath the definite counterfeit. Know the difference. Two and five eighths from one end of the eye to the other. You have two and a quarter. You have two and a quarter on the real Thai Beanie Baby. On a real Kiwi is a two inch section of blue compared to on this counterfeit, a one and a half inch section of blue and a definite, definite difference in color. Valentino, 
Notice the noses. See that? Now let's turn that a little bit. It's flat. That nose is totally flat. And it's a little bit wider than the nose on the real Thai Beanie Baby, which is rounded. Take, take a look. Come on in. See? That's round. Round on the outside. It looks totally different. You can see the difference immediately on that particular factor. Over here is a little bit shorter. He's not quite as large. The eyes are a little farther apart. So pay attention to the different things that we talk about on all the different beanies and compare, compare, compare. That's what you want to do. And also deal with reputable dealers, of course. The counterfeits that we are showing you are not the only counterfeits on the market today. But the different things that we're showing you and telling you about the counterfeits are the things that you need to look for. Things like the flat noses, the tush tags, the tags themselves, and the differences. The bottom line of all this, for me, Peggy, I'm not sure what you tell your people, but people that come to us and say, how do we protect ourselves here? What do I do? It's get yourself educated. Find out the difference. Know the difference. Touch them. Feel them. Look at them. Uh, and buy from someone that you trust. Buy from someone who's reputable, uh, someone that if you have a problem, you can go back to them and they'll say, sure, I apologize, here's your money back. Goldie the fish, she's got rhythm, she's got soul. What's more to like in a fishbowl? Through sound waves, Goldie swam because this goldfish likes to jam. Legs the frog. Legs lives in a hollow log. Legs likes to play leapfrog. If you like to hang out at the lake, Legs will be a new friend you'll make. Tusk the walrus. Tusk brushes his teeth every day. To keep them shiny, it's the only way. Teeth are special, so you must try and they will sparkle when you say hi. We got a piece. I love beanies. Looking for bears. Bears and boys, beanies, right. There's, there's bears in there. Good luck bear hunting. Yeah. You don't need a gun here. No. This no. money. We take all these home live. Uh, yeah, I'm an avid collector, and also my friend Kim is dragging me over here all the way from California. And what beanie are you looking for? Uh, Britannia. Britannia. Yeah, the brown one. What would you pick? Uh, up to we're, 500. We're not, and we're not selling. Up to 500. Do you enjoy the hunt? I love it. Love the hunt. Okay, love well, the gentleman up here is, is, is hunting for bears, too. I'll have to trip him on the way in. Yeah, yeah you trip him on the way in. That's right. And uh, he doesn't have a gun. You don't have a gun. But you take him home live, and all you need is money. What's your favorite beanie? What's your favorite beanie? Princess. What's your favorite beanie, sir? I'm, I'm just with her. You're just with her. What's your favorite Aaron. beanie? Aaron. Aaron. What's your favorite beanie? Garcia. What's your favorite beanie? Tuffy. Bruno. Tuffy. Bruno. What's your favorite Princess beanie? Die. What's your favorite beanie, man? Princess Di. What's yours? I mean hers. What's Chops. your favorite beanie? Chops is your favorite beanie? Chop. Why? Chop. Why is Chops your favorite beanie? First one I bought. First one we bought. First one you bought. Five dollars. Right, let's see, how many do you have? Oh, 120 maybe. <laughs> We used to can vegetables, now we can beanies. That's right. Okay, so we got a canned uh, kiwi. Yes, and this is Tabasco for the bulls. Okay, canned bull, Tabasco. And then that's your American trio down there. It's it's Lefty, Righty, and Liberty. And the Valentino, we put a little crown, so it makes a nice touch on the piece. And how much is the... Uh, the little crowns are ten dollars. Oh, this is where it all started, and this is where you find the best stuff. It's like you came prepared. Yeah, we come. This uh, display helps us get the, the attention of people. Get some people to sell us their beanies. I just want the case. This is uh, the employee there. Ty made them. 
for his employees, not last Christmas, but the Christmas prior, and gave them, gave everyone a dinner, and invited the employees, just select employees, and made approximately 300. They came with a green ribbon, one came with a green ribbon, and one came with a red ribbon. And I sold the green ribbon one, and uh, this is what's left. What are you selling them for? Uh, 5,000, actually I'll probably go, they go between 45 and 5,000. They only made 300, so they're very rare. They don't have a hang tag, and their tush tag is different on them as opposed to the regular new face style, which has a black and white tush tag. It's also sewn with a different color thread. And all these things matter. All these things matter. All the little, all the little idiosyncrasies. Yes. Ha we have to know them, don't we? Absolutely, because otherwise you can wind up with someone with a great imagination who's trying to do creative beanies. I see. And we don't want to do creative beanies. No, we don't want to no, do creative we want beanies. authentic. What do we have here? We have a 1994 original Thai catalog. Uh, it's very rare. It goes for about $350 right now. And how, uh, how expensive is your collection? And what would you say it's worth? Around $100,000. $100,000. Well, that's Every great. Day, a little bit there. Looks like uh, last night uh, we saw these ragtime uh, guys in the hotel. Now they're here at the show. Yeah, they are. Uh, what are we selling them for? We're actually not selling them. I'm just showing the display. Bring people into my booth so they can buy my tag protectors. And okay. I'm giving away samples of tag protectors. And these are the tag protectors right here? Yes, they are. Hey, take a look at that. They're right there with the 800 number on it. It's a limited edition Beanie Mania Congo. No one knows how many anything are made except this item here. It says a numbered card to go along with it. So with that, you have to... When you go to sell them, you're going to sell each one with a numbered card. Each one with a numbered card. Great. It's beautiful. And how much was it? Uh, 175. 175. Is that a deal? I think so. I think it's pretty good. So we have here uh, some. The market creates more markets. This right here are the Grateful Dead beanies, and these here are the meanies. This is uh, Armadillo Dan is a fighting machine. He's trained to be tough, hard, and mean. Always ready to attack with a cannon on his back. Just don't ask him to clean the latrine. Now, you know, that's a little bit of a different poem than a Ty Warner poem. We're back again with Jody and Kim, and uh, hey, I think they've been successful on their hunt. Uh, tell us about it. Kim, what'd you find? Well, we bought three Britannias today. She found them. Did you pay the price you wanted? Yeah, we okay, we got a real good price. What was that price? Um, $5.50. 50. Wait a minute. I thought I heard them say that the highest they would go was 5 Yeah. Well, that's we wanted to get that, that rumor spread around, so maybe someone would protest it. Oh, I see. The old rumor spreading business for the beanies. Right. Okay. Do you do that on the internet, too? Do you spread rumors on the internet? No, we don't deal on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Live only. Okay, so what are, we have trap here. Right. right. What did you have to pay for trap? Um, twenty two hundred. Twenty two hundred for but trap. His tags in mint condition, and he's he's perfect. He's perfect. Mm -hmm. He should be perfect for twenty two hundred. Shouldn't he? Yeah. He's, he's, yeah, that's a that's a trap. Trap. Trapping for twenty two hundred. Thanks so much for spending this hour with us. We hope you've enjoyed the Beanie Lover video. And we hope you'll buy a few of our new videos that are coming out soon. How to Spot Counterfeit Beanies, The Beanie Lover's Video Guide, and more. We'll keep you informed. Be checking your internet sites and the Beanie Mom website for our new program, The Beanie Lover Show, soon to be broadcast on cable in your area. We look forward to visiting with you then. Thanks again for buying the Beanie Lover video.